The 1991 Saturn combines both the dependability of proven automotive technology and advanced features in one attractive package. Often during the design of the Saturn, engineers from many firms went back to the drawing board, starting with a clean piece of paper to produce the finest product possible for the lowest cost. What you'll see in this video is just such a case. In this presentation, Chassis Systems, we'll cover the Delco Moraine ABS-6 braking system and the Saginaw Gear Electronic Variable Orifice Steering System. As an experienced technician, you may already be familiar with many of the basic concepts you will see in this video, but both the Saturn ABS and Saturn EBO systems incorporate some completely unique features. In this video, we'll concentrate on the unique features of these systems. Let's start with the Anti-Lock Brake System, or ABS. The basic operating principle of ABS is fairly simple. If one or more wheels start to lock up while the car is braking, the car won't stop as quickly. It might lose directional stability and be difficult to control. If the locking wheel is in front, the driver will have trouble steering the car, since steering ability depends on the friction between the tire and the road. The purpose of an anti-lock brake system, as the name implies, is to prevent any of the wheels from locking up. To do this, the system has to be able to do two things. Monitor the speed of each wheel and independently control the hydraulic pressure to both rear brakes and each individual front brake caliper. Here's how. Speed sensors are located at each wheel. When one wheel starts to lock during a braking maneuver, the control module senses the wheel lock from the speed sensor. The control module then causes the hydraulic modulator assembly to selectively reduce the brake pressure to the locking wheel or wheels. Since the brakes aren't holding the locking wheel as hard, it recovers to match the others. This procedure can be repeated many times until ABS braking is no longer required. That's the principle of anti-lock brakes, and you may already be familiar with it. But many people don't realize that there are two ways to control the brake pressure. Solenoid-based pressure modulation and motor-based pressure modulation. You might recognize this modulator. It contains solenoids which are rapidly turned on and off during ABS operation to alternately apply and remove pressure at the locking wheel. This is solenoid-based pressure modulation. It's the most common type of ABS and may produce a pulsating brake pedal. The Delco Moraine ABS-6 anti-lock braking system developed for Saturn works in a different way. It uses motor-based pressure modulation. Instead of electrical solenoids that turn on and off to regulate brake pressure, ABS-6 adjusts brake pressure with three small reversible motors that move pistons with these gear drives. Each piston resides in a separate hydraulic path. Two separate pistons are used to control the front wheels, while the two pistons for the rear wheels are controlled by a single gear drive. Let's have a look at the whole system, and then we'll examine each part in detail. The Delco Moraine ABS-6 anti-lock brake system consists of the ABS control module, the hydraulic modulator assembly, four-wheel speed sensors, the ABS enable relay, and a brake switch, along with the necessary electrical harness and pressure lines. First, let's look at the control module. The ABS control module has three main duties to continuously monitor the speed of the wheels, to control brake pressure to prevent wheel lockup during anti-lock braking, and to detect malfunctions in the ABS system by monitoring various electrical circuits. The ABS control module is located under the instrument panel right next to the powertrain control module. The control module continually reads and compares the input of all four wheel speed sensors. It detects brake application by monitoring the brake switch. The control module only commands ABS operation when the brake switch is closed. When it needs to adjust brake pressure, the module sends the appropriate command to the hydraulic modulator assembly. Unlike most others, the ABS-6 modulator does not use a separate pump and accumulator, but a standard power assist vacuum booster. In many ways, the whole ABS system is simply added to the existing power brakes, so there's nothing really new to learn about the basic brakes. 
As we've seen, the modulator assembly contains pistons that are driven by reversible motors. The pistons are normally kept all the way up or home. But during anti-lock operation, when a wheel begins to lock up, a motor retracts the piston in that affected brake channel. This provides more space for the brake fluid to fill and causes the pressure at that brake to drop. When the slower wheel has resumed its speed, the motor reverses itself, moving the piston up and increasing the pressure. This process will continue until ABS is no longer required. Of course, if the pressure in a hydraulic passage is to drop when a piston retracts, that passage has to be sealed away from the brake pedal pressure. Normally, the passages between the master cylinder and the brake calipers are kept open by check valves, which are controlled by the pistons. But when a piston moves down during anti-lock operation, it closes the check valve and seals the passage. As an added safety feature, two solenoid valves in the front brake pressure system let the brake fluid bypass the ABS components during normal braking. These solenoids are normally open, which means that any time they are turned off, the front brake passages are held open to the master cylinder. So no failure of the ABS system can ever cause the front brakes to malfunction. During anti-lock operation, the ABS control module closes both solenoid valves so that all the brake fluid must go past the piston. When the piston closes the check valve, the brake passage for this wheel is completely isolated from the master cylinder. The ABS-6 system also includes four wheel speed sensors, one for each individual wheel. The front sensors are mounted on the steering knuckles. They read toothed rings on the outer drive axle. The rear sensors are part of the wheel bearing assemblies. The sensors generate a pulsing AC voltage by placing a magnet close to a notched wheel. As each tooth passes by the magnet, it produces an electrical pulse. The frequency and amplitude of these pulses is directly related to the speed of the wheels. The faster the speed, the higher the frequency. In this way, the ABS control module always knows the exact speed of each individual wheel. The control module won't have any effect on the brakes at all unless it receives a signal that the brakes are being used. The brake switch is normally open and closes when the driver depresses the brake pedal. Its main job is to control the rear stop lamps, but it's also wired to the ABS control module. When the brake switch is closed, the module knows it should monitor wheel speed for possible lockup. The control module has to have a way to turn the ABS system off if it detects a malfunction. For this, it uses the ABS Enable Relay. The ABS Enable Relay is the main power switch for the entire ABS system. It's located behind the instrument panel, taped to the harness near the steering column. It works like a typical normally open relay. Whenever the control module's diagnostic function detects an ABS failure, it disables the ABS system by opening the enable relay. The main circuit protection for the entire ABS system is this 30 amp maxi fuse in the underhood junction block. This 5 amp mini fuse protects the control module. There are two lights on the instrument panel that deal with the brakes. The red brake telltale indicates problems in the base brake hydraulics and electrical systems. But the ABS control module can also turn it on if there is an ABS problem that would affect the base brakes. In that case, both the red brake telltale and amber anti-lock telltale would be illuminated. The amber anti-lock telltale lights up if there is a problem with the ABS system. Also, any time the ignition is turned to run, the telltale should light for a bulb check. If there's no problem with the system, the telltale should turn off two seconds after the engine starts. Any time the engine is running and the amber ABS telltale is solidly on, the control module has detected a problem and has disabled the ABS system. A non-critical ABS problem such as an electrical fault in the red brake telltale will cause the amber anti-lock telltale to flash. However, the anti-lock telltale cannot flash diagnostic codes. To read ABS diagnostic codes, you have to use Saturn's portable diagnostic tool, a scan tool, or the service stall system. We won't cover diagnosis in this video, but you will find complete descriptions of all the diagnostic codes in the service manual. To summarize, 
If there are no telltales on while the engine is running, the control module currently detects no problems. If the amber anti-lock telltale is flashing, the control module has detected a minor problem which should be repaired, but which is not critical to ABS or base brake performance. If a solid amber anti-lock telltale is lit, the control module has detected a problem with the ABS system. The system is disabled and a diagnostic code has been stored. If only the red brake telltale is lit, there is a problem with the base brake system. If both the red and amber telltales are solidly lit, there is a malfunction of the ABS system which could affect the performance of the base brakes. Each time the engine is started and the vehicle is driven over three miles per hour, the modulator will initialize, that is, two of the three motors will cycle down, then return to home positions. This is to test the motors. The Delco Moraine ABS-6 anti-lock brake system combines performance, reliability, and an extensive diagnostic capability to provide the benefits of anti-lock braking in an economical package. It does not replace the base brake system, but augments it to improve safety and stability. It's just one more way that Saturn has provided world-class quality in an economical car. Here's something you may not have thought of before. Power steering has always been a mixed blessing on a passenger car. Anyone who has ever done without it knows how important power steering is when you are parallel parking or performing some other maneuver that requires a lot of steering effort at low speed. But the same power assist that makes parking so effortless can make the steering a little too responsive at highway speed. For years, auto designers have looked for a way to better control power steering to provide maximum assist at low speed, but decrease the amount of assist as the car's speed increased. With the Saturn power steering system, that's precisely what's been achieved. A system that provides ease of low speed maneuvering, but also maintains comfort and safety, improved road feel, and directional stability at highway speeds. Most of the Saturn power steering system is conventional. You probably recognize everything here. It uses a rack and pinion steering gear of a type you may have already seen. The only difference is a small change in the rotary control valve. On the Saturn, the steering gear assembly will not be repaired, but replaced as an assembly when service is necessary. The power steering system uses a vane type pump to produce the required pressure and flow. The difference between our pump and the standard pump is a device called the Electronic Variable Orifice, or EVO, actuator. The EVO actuator consists of a solenoid, which controls a normally open valve in response to pulse width modulated signals from the powertrain control module, or PCM. The valve, in turn, controls the flow of power steering fluid to the steering gear. During low speed maneuvers, such as parallel parking, when full power steering assist is needed, the PCM commands zero pulse width to the solenoid. Under this condition, the valve is completely open and allows maximum fluid flow. But as the vehicle's speed increases and less steering assist is desired, the PCM sends pulse width modulated signals to the solenoid. The solenoid begins to close the valve, reducing fluid flow. The PCM continues to monitor EVO feedback and adjusts the pulse width signal based on vehicle inputs to obtain the necessary fluid flow. On the four-door model, that's all there is to it. The Saturn Coupe SC has a faster, more responsive steering gear ratio than the four-door. In a high-speed evasive maneuver, the steering gear may require additional pump flow for optimum performance. To accomplish this, the Coupe has one additional component. This device is called a handwheel speed sensor. The handwheel speed sensor sends information to the PCM about how fast the driver is turning the steering wheel. If the steering wheel speed increases past a point that the PCM interprets as an evasive maneuver, the PCM responds by decreasing the pulse width to the EVO actuator. This opens the valve and allows more fluid flow and more power steering assist. 
As soon as the speed of the hand wheel sensor falls below a certain threshold, EVO operation returns to normal. Since control of the EVO system is integrated into the PCM, it has full electronic diagnostic capability. If the PCM detects a problem with the EVO system, it responds by setting an information flag and disabling EVO. Disabling EVO results in full power assist at all times, just like a standard power steering system. In this video, we've seen just two ways in which Saturn is striving to provide world-class solutions to the needs of the 90s. The 1991 Saturn is designed to make your job as a technician a lot easier, with dependability, ready accessibility, and easily serviceable components. The combination of Saturn features, Saturn diagnostic tools and procedures, and you, the trained Saturn technician, forms an unbeatable team.